Good day. This video explaining the concepts of an exponential organization is a part of my teaching exercise for the OpenEXO Foundation's Certification Assessment. The content of this presentation is based on the OpenEXO Foundation training and represents an extract of Salim Ismail's book, Exponential Organization. At the end of this video, I request you to click on the feedback form in the description to acknowledge this teaching being received from me. Fill in your uh, first name, last name, and email. Confirm that you have received this presentation from me. Uh, put my name exactly as shown here in the column I was taught by. If you wish to receive further communications from OpenEXO, tick the box for I agree, else leave it blank. Click Submit. What is an EXO? Exponential organizations are purpose-driven entities that leverage new exponential technologies and a set of common organizational attributes that allow them to tap into and manage abundance to scale exponentially as technology does. An exponential organization is one whose impact or output is disproportionately large, at least 10x larger compared to its peers because of the use of new organizational techniques that leverage accelerating technologies. We are already 30 to 40 years into the information paradigm. Considering that we are on the cusp of exponential transformation, in these last 30 or 40 years, we have had just 1% of the transformation that we are about to see in the next five to 10 years. This is going to lead to a growth in the number of EXOs that can ride this wave. In the last two decades, the internet has allowed startups to drop the cost of demand exponentially via online marketing, referral marketing, and a viral loop. EXOs scale by dropping the marginal cost of supply. Airbnb's marginal cost of adding a hotel room is almost zero, whereas a hotel chain would have to build a whole new block. This happens similarly with Uber or Wikipedia or thousands of other such EXOs. We have never seen this before in business. When you lower the cost of supply, you decrease the denominator and your market cap explodes. This is one of the reasons why there are so many unicorns these days. A startup that has essentially no marginal cost of supply is an ex existential threat to an incumbent. In addition to leveraging accelerating technologies, EXOs have a MTP, Massive Transformative Purpose, and they possess these 10 organizational attributes in common. Five of these are external, five are internal. The external characteristics are staff on demand, community and crowd, leverage assets, algorithms, and engagement. And five of them, the internal mechanisms are uh, interfaces, dashboards, experimentation, autonomy, and social technology. These three components MTP, scale, and ideas make up an EXO. A massive transformational purpose is an organization's higher aspirational purpose. The ideal MTP should be so sweeping, aspirational, and definitive that competitors are, are unable to craft an MTP capable of surpassing it. A great example is Google's MTP of organizing all the world's information. Airbnb, belong anywhere. GitHub, social coding. MTP is not a mission statement. An MTP should move a team's focus from internal affairs to positive external impact and should provide a rallying cry that, that draws people in while filtering out the uninterested. Let's look at the five external characteristics that define an exponential organization for which we use the acronym SCALE. Staff on demand. The half-life of a learned skill used to be about 30 years. Today, it's down to about five years. In any information-enabled business, a large internal staff seems increasingly unnecessary. It's counterproductive and expensive. GigWalk, which relies on half a million smartphone-enabled workers, offers an example of how this new world of employment works. When Procter & Gamble needs to know how and where its merchandise is being uh, placed on Walmart shelves around the world, it can use GigWalk's 
platform to instantly deploy thousands of people who are paid a few dollars to walk into Walmart and check the shelves. The results come in within an hour. In years past, having, having a large workforce differentiated your enterprise and allowed it to accomplish more. Today, that same large fo workforce can become an anchor that reduces maneuverability and slows you down. Community or crowd. If you build communities and you do things in public, you don't have to find the right people. They find you. You need strong leadership to manage the community. Because although there are no employees, people still have responsibilities and need to be held accountable for their performances. Already EXOs are leveraging community and crowd for many of the functions traditionally held inside the enterprise, including idea generation, funding, design, distribution, marketing, and sales. This shift is powerful and taps into what university professor and social media guru uh, Clay Shirky calls cognitive surplus. The world has over a trillion hours a year of free time to commit to shared projects, he said in a recent radio broadcast. Algorithms. Today, the world is pretty much run on algorithms. From automotive anti-lock braking to Amazon's recommendation engine, from dynamic pricing for airlines to predicting the success of upcoming Hollywood blockbusters, from writing news posts, air traffic control, credit card fraud detection. Algorithms are everywhere in modern life. Machine learning is the ability to accurately perform new unseen tasks built on known properties learned from training or historic data and based on prediction. Deep learning is a new and exciting subset of machine learning based on neural net technology. It allows a machine to discover new patterns without being exposed to any historical or training data. In the same way that today we can no longer handle the complexities of air traffic control or supply chain management without algorithms, almost all business insights and decisions of tomorrow will be data driven. Leverage assets. Recently there has been an accelerating trend towards outsourcing even mission critical assets. Non-ownership then is the key to owning the future except, of course, when it comes to scarce resources and assets. Tesla owns its own factory, and Amazon owns its own warehouses. When the asset in question is rare or extremely scarce, then ownership is a better option. But if your asset is information-based or commoditized at all, then accessing is better than possible. Like in the case of Airbnb, where they do not own the rooms that it provides. Uber does not own the taxis that it provides. Engagement. Properly implemented, engagement creates network effects and positive feedback loops with extraordinary reach. Today, more than 700 million people around the world play online games. Foldit uses this phenomena to help decode even the COVID-19 virus recently, and it helped the biochemist to gather invaluable data by predicting and producing the protein models. We will now look at the EXO's internal mechanisms, which can be expressed with the acronym IDEAS. Interfaces. Interfaces are filtering and matching processes by which EXO's bridge from scale externalities to internal IDEAS control framework. They are algorithms and automated workflows that route the output of scale externalities to the right people at the right time internally. A classic example is Google's AdWords. So a key, key to its scalability is self-provisioning. That is, the interface for an AdWords customer has been completely automated such that there is no manual involvement. Uber has its own way of handling its army of drivers. Dashboards. There has always been a tension in business created by the need to balance instrumentation and data collection versus running the company and getting things done. Collecting the internal progress statistics takes time, effort, and expensive IT. That's why the results were usually tracked annually or at best quarterly. 
Today's startups are leveraging wireless broadband, internet, sensors, and the cloud to track the same data in real time. Experimentation. We define experimentation as the implementation of the lean startup methodology of testing assumptions and constantly experimenting with controlled risk. Autonomy with, uh, is described as the self-organizing multidisciplinary teams operating within with a decentralized authority. Wall Software, a game company, is the most unusual enterprise. It has 330 staffers, but no classic management structure, reporting lines, job descriptions, or regular meetings. Instead, the company hires talented, innovative self-starters who decide which projects they wish to join. They are also encouraged to start new projects as long as they fit the company's MTP. Autonomy is a prerequisite for permissionless innovation. Social technology. Social technology is finding fertile ground because the workplace has become increasingly digitized. Social technology has three objectives. Reduce the distance between obtaining and processing information and decision making. Migrate from having to look up information to having it flow through your perception. Leverage community to build out ideas. From our perspective, social technologies are comprised of few key elements. Social objects, activity streams, task management, file sharing, uh, telepresence, virtual words, and emotional sensing. Most EXOs have at least four out of these 10 uh, internal and external attributes implemented within their organization. Let's look at the implications or the key dynamics at play here. Information accelerates everything. In 1995, 710 million rolls of film were developed at thousands of processing centers. By 2005, nearly 200 billion digital photographs, equaling about 8 billion rolls, had been taken and edited, stored, displayed in ways that were unimaginable just a few years before. Today, web users upload almost 1 billion photographs per day to sites like Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram. As we add trillions of sensors on every device, process, and person, the process will accelerate even faster to almost unimaginable pace. Demonetization. One of the most important and least celebrated achievements of the internet during the last decade was that it cut the marginal cost of marketing and sale to nearly zero. By this, we mean that with the web, it is possible to promote an online product worldwide for a tiny fraction of what it cost just 25 years ago. Disruption is a new norm. We see a consistent set of steps around disruptive innovation comprising the following. Domain or technology becomes information enabled. The cost drops exponentially and access is democratized. Hobbyists come together to form an open source community. New combinations of technologies and convergences are introduced and new products and services appear that are orders of magnitude better and cheaper. The status quo is disrupted. Beware the expert. History has shown that the best inventions or solutions rarely come from experts. The experts are trained to think linearly. They look at past trends and they will expertly predict what's going to come in the future. But the best ideas come from people who aren't the domain experts, but who offer a fresh perspective. Dead to the five-year plan. In an exponential world, the five-year plan is not only unworkable, it is counterproductive. The future is changing so quickly that any forward look is likely to produce false scenarios, so much so that today's five-year plans have a high probability of offering the wrong advice. Smaller big beats bigger. The answer to the question of how big an exponential organization can get is yet another more precise question. How quickly can you convert exponential growth into the critical mass needed to become a platform? Once that happens, there is no practical limit. Rent, do not own. It is estimated that there are now hundreds of fab labs operating around the world. Soon every town and neighborhood will have one, meaning that every individual or small team will be able to rent equipment and be as capital empowered as an established corporation. 
Today, airlines pay for the engine by the number of hours flown. In other words, something as expensive and complex as an aircraft engine has now become a rented pay-as-you-go asset rather than an expensive internal business unit. Trust beats control, open beats closed. At Facebook, development teams enjoy the full trust of a management. Any team can release new code onto the live site without oversight. As a management style, it might seem counterintuitive, but with individual reputations at stake, Facebook teams end up working that much harder to ensure there are no errors. Everything is measurable, anything is knowable. We usually track our health using just three basic parameters. Temperature, blood pressure, pulse rate. Now imagine if we could measure each one of those 10 trillion cells, not just with three metrics, but with hundreds. We are moving towards a world in which everything will be measured and anything can be knowable, both in the world around us and within our body. Only enterprises that plan for this new reality will have a chance at long-term success. Find your MDP. Begin by asking the question, what is the biggest problem I'd like to see solved? Identify that problem space and then come up with an MTP for it. It's the burning passion to solve an obsessive complex problem that keeps an entrepreneur pushing along the roller coaster ride of ebullience and despair that is the story of every startup. Khalil Gibran says, work is love made visible. The goal is not to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Please do not forget to click on the feedback form in the description uh, to acknowledge this teaching. Fill in your first name, last name, and email. Confirm that you have received this presentation from me. Uh, put my name exactly as shown here in the column I was taught by. If you wish to receive further communication from OpenEXO, tick the box for I agree, else leave it blank. Click Submit. Thank you for watching. Your massive transformational purpose can be found at the confluence point of these four areas. To identify your massive transformational purpose, answer these few questions. What is it that you are really passionate about? Follow your passion, follow your heart. Write down those items that you really feel passionate about. Having done that, now let's identify what you are good at. What are your skills? What is it that you can do best? So after identifying what you love to do and what you are good at, Turn to the third question, which is, what will you get paid for? What can you get paid for? What are the offerings that you can produce out of what you love and what you're good at doing? The fourth question to consider here is, what does the world need? What is that great pressing need out of the attributes that you have identified that the world currently needs and which you identify as a gap currently. So what we have done is we have kind of found a confluence of your heart, your passion, your hands or brain, so heart meets hands and brain, what, what are the skills that you possess, what you can get paid for, and what the world needs. 